Hey students, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to uh, teach you the differential rate law. <clears throat> and what this uh, differential rate law refers to is, uh, if you remember, there's four factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction. And one of those factors is the reactant concentration. So the differential rate law attempts to show the exact proportions, the, we call them orders. Uh, mathematically, it's just um, a way to explain how changing the concentration of reactant A affects the overall reaction. In the bottom left hand corner of your screen you see uh, the slide that appears in your kinetics PowerPoint. So you can refer to that PowerPoint, maybe print the slide out so you can see it in bigger font <clears throat> as we go through this up to you. Uh, but let's just take a quick look through the slide and then we'll get into some practice problems and I'll explain how to work a differential rate law problem. So just remember that this is called the method of initial rates. And so what we're doing here is we're trying to see what's happening to the rate of reaction as we affect or, or change concentrations of any reactant right at the very beginning. So we know from early in this chapter that anytime we run a reaction, the concentration of the reactants drops off. And the maximum rate is always right at the beginning. That's where you have the largest slope. So it's not really important for working these problems, but some of you may be curious as to how do we know what that rate could be. Well, just let me briefly explain one way we could get this. We could go to the lab, we could run this experiment and just let time pass, and then we could come back and we could make a graph of concentration versus time. Then we could apply a little, either a little calculus to it or just from physics, using your slope calculation, find the slope of the line tangent as close as we can get to time zero. So time zero is pretty vertical and it becomes an issue, but as close as you can get to time zero, find um, the tangent, the slope of that tangent line, and that will give you the initial rate or very close to it. So the next thing I want to talk about is what does our differential rate law look like? And so if we just take a generic reaction here, A plus B plus C. I have three reactants this time, and they go to products. So a rate law tells you the reaction rate. That makes sense. And then what we do from there is we include K, which is called the rate constant. So that will be like the slope and your Y equals MX plus B. And then we include the concentrations of each reactant. And this is all multiplication, so times, times, times. And then one more thing, very important, goes into a rate law. We have to include an exponent, which stand for the orders. And typically we use M, N, L, and there's no rhyme or reason. You can use A, B, C if you want. It's just that people use, I don't know, some kind of teacher somewhere learned how to do it or a professor and it just kind of filtered its way down. So this is what we would call a differential rate law anytime you see it like this. These exponents are called reaction orders and they describe that reactant's individual proportionality. If one of these orders is one, that means you get a linear change in rate as you change the concentration of that reactant. And then you have the same thing, second order, you get a quadratic, and so forth. All right, when we make these orders, we do not just pull these orders from the coefficient. Some students at the beginning think that's where they come from. It's possible they could be the same, but it would be just a coincidence. So we have to actually go through and calculate these orders, and that's what I want to show you how to do. Uh, last little thing on the, on the slide here, you know, well, a couple things here, but the very last thing on the slide says we add up these exponents to get what's called the overall order, and that's important because if we go back up to the fourth bullet point on this page, the rate constant k, I'm going to show you how to calculate k, but we find the units of that with another little equation. I'll write it down here. The units of rate are molarity per second. That's rate rate. And then so if we want to find the units of K, we'll take that molarity per second and divide it by molarity to the overall reaction order. And that's how we find the units of K. And we'll get to that with the problem. But that's just a little, a little for now. So before we get into a big problem though, I want to talk a little, little math, just some simple math before we get going into here. 
And so let's think about this one. So we've got just for reaction reactant A being converted into B. Um, I want to make some changes to A. So let's just start out with concentration of A. Let's pretend it's 0.1. We run this reaction. The rate of formation of B is 0.4. I, you know, whatever. I just made those up. Now the real chemistry part behind this is what do we do in trial two? Well, I just want to play around with A. I want to double it. So I'm going to convert that and make the initial concentration of A be 0.2 molar instead of 0.1 molar. And then we would investigate what happens to the rate. So we run the experiment, do all the work, come back and mathematically determine, hey, the rate went up to 0.8 molar per second. Well, what, what kind of change was that? From 0.1 to 0.2, that's, that's a times 2. And then the rate went also up by a times 2. So that's go back to algebra one, rise and run. If you just doubled your rise, you doubled your run. And so what that means is that this is a first order reaction where your, your order M or N would equal to one. It's linear. And we could predict what this is gonna be. If this were now 0.3, we would predict this would be 1.2. So we're gonna see the same increase, it's linear. All right, it doesn't always have to be linear. If we look at some more examples, so for A plus B here, let's do sort of the same thought process. Let's start with point 0.1 and point 0.4. And this time I want to double A again. This time though it's not point 0.2. Let's imagine, hey, now it's 1.6. Well, what change did we see here? This is still doubling it, but this now is times four. So your rise and your run are not the same. Doubling one variable causes a quadrupling of the other. And we know that is y is proportional to x squared. So here you have a second order reaction. And basically what I'm saying is it's quadratic. And that's the effect that, that concentration has on rate. So everything we do with differential rate law is trying to figure out what those orders are. So let's take a few practice shots at it. <clears throat> this is the worksheet that was posted to go along with this video. We'll work through the rest of it on the video or um, in class. So just a couple of these problems. Number one is very simple, I hope. The initial rate of reaction is 16 times greater as the concentration of one of the reactants is quadrupled. All right, well, so we quadrupled it, which means it went up by four. Or we could just say, hey, this is reactant A, and we was taking a ratio there, well, quadrupling it for A. The A's cancel, so that's just 4 to some order, and it changed it by 16. So a little easy math there says that this is quadratic, the order is 2. Question number 2. I asked this question just to remind me to, to let you know that we can have something other than positive integer orders. You can have negative integers, you can have uh, fractions orders. A negative one very specifically means inverse. So y equals one over x. So what happens to the initial rate when the concentration increases by a factor of two? So again, we have you know two a over a. So this one goes up by two, but we're already told the order is negative one. So how will the rate change? Two to the negative one power is one half. So we can see that is an inverse proportion. All right, and number three here, reaction rate, we're, we're, we're given the rate law here, A times B squared. If the concentration of A is tripled and B is doubled, by what factor is the rate increase? All right, well, let's take a look at the math here. We're going to triple A so that would be tripled to the first order. And remember that triple is like 3a over a, so it, it goes and the a is canceled. And then the b is here, doubled, but it's second order. So mathematically that is 3 times 4. So this one would go up by a factor of 12. I'm making those changes. 
And then finally, number four here, I got something other else cool to show you. I have a rate law for the reaction that involves methane and oxygen. And by the way, this rate law has a bit of a typo. That should be O2. But more importantly, only one of my reactants is in there. Is that an omission? Is that an error? No. So this rate law really is rate equals K methane oxygen squared. But if the oxygen if the methane's not there, that means its order is zero. So that's another possibility for your order. If the order is zero, this term just goes to one which means that no matter what you do to the methane if, or anything is zero order it will not change your rate. So all this data here if the concentration of methane has changed I don't care it doesn't make a difference and the concentration of oxygen has changed from 0.3 to 0.9 well, that one makes a difference so 0.9 from 0.3 let's figure out what that order well we know the order it's 2 it's from up here in our rate law what factor does the rate change? So that will be 0.9 divided by 0.3 is 3. Sorry, I had a brain melt down there. 3 squared equals 9. So it would increase by a factor of 9. <coughs> Excuse the cough. All right, so let's get into some real differential rate law problems. And number 5 here. I'm just going to work on getting the orders. I'm not going to find K and I'm not going to find anything else. We're just going to find the orders for these. And let me just tell you, Ralph, there's a couple of things that we have to look for. Uh, there is no real formula for this. I know some of you really, really like to see formulas. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. What we try to do is we try to take ratios, like you were seeing me doing up here in these examples, like 0 0.9 to 0 0.3 and seeing how does adjusting a, a something from trial 2 to trial 1 make a change. So for example if I wanted to take a ratio of trial 2 to trial 1 really there's only one formula and that is taking the concentration of each reactant like that trial 2 to trial 1 and assigning them an order. Each one. And I have written way too big here. So now I have doubts about whether I'll be able to fit the entire thing on this page. That's okay. We'll figure it out. All right. And then so we do the same thing for rate. Rate of two to the rate of one. So we're just taking a giant proportion all the time. Now it looks like a lot of work, but here's a couple of things we want to look for to make good choices. Let's just assume we want to start out by finding the bromate order, so M. The number one requirement that I have to do is pick two trials that give me a number here other than one. In other words, pick two trials where the bromate concentration is indeed changing. And as I look at my data here, trial one and two are great choices because bromate is indeed changing there. Now, what about these other two? If I'm just focused on bromate, the easiest thing to do is pick two trials where the bromate is changing, but these two, the other reactants, no matter how many there are, are being held constant. So let's look real quick at bromide. We can see from trial two to trial one, bromide has been held constant. That means this ratio here is 1. And 1 to any power is just 1. So the moral of that story is, if I can find trials where the one I'm looking for is changing, but all the other ones are being held constant, I can basically ignore them from this quote-unquote equation and just find one order at a time. So let's do that for bromate. I've got trial 2 and 1 picked out, so let's do that. Let's do point two over 0.1 to the m power and coming over here we see the rate 1.6 10 to the minus 3 over 8 10 to the minus 4 okay so let's just come over here and do some simplification that's 2 to the m power 
equals, and that's like saying 16 over 8, so that's 2. So from this math, M equals 1. This reaction is first order with respect to bromate. If I double bromate, the rate will double if everything else is constant. If I triple it, the rate will triple. Again, if everything else is held constant. All right. So let's find bromide now. Let's find a trial where bromide is changing. It needs to be trial three because that's the only one where it's different. So what other trials would let the other two go away? I can see from three to two, bromate stays the same, so that's good. And then over here, hydrogen. Okay, so trial three to trial two looks great. So we're just going to take a, a ratio of those two. You might be asking, why not two to three? Why does it got to be three to two? And that's my choice because I don't want to deal with fractions. So I want the, the, this quotient to be a positive integer. So I want it to be 0.2 over 0.1 and not 0.1 over 0.2. But that's not a requirement. That's just my choice. All right, again, the other ones are all canceled out because they're, they're constant. And so we get 3.2, 10 to the minus 3 over 1.6, 10 to the minus 3. <clears throat> Simplifying 2 to the n equals 2. Well, it's not too exciting. n is still equal 1. So we have another linear relationship. Maybe hydrogen will be different for us. So let's take a look at the hydrogen. It's changing from trial 4 to 3, 2. It doesn't matter. We've got to pick trial 4. But let's pick where the other two are constant looks like trial 4 and 1 will give us good information. Trial 4 to trial 1. If I do that, it's 0.2 over 0.1 to the L. Okay, it's 3.2, 10 to the minus 3 over 8, 10 to the minus 4. Let's simplify, so that's 2 to the L power this time equals, all right, so this number is like 32 over 8, which is 4, so it looks like L equals 2. So this one's actually quadratic. So again, these orders are just what happens to the rate as I change each one individually, holding the others constant. Like example 3 at the top, though, if I change everything, let's just say I went through this reaction and I doubled every reactant's concentration, then the overall effect would be to double, double, quadruple. So that's double times a double, which is a quadruple, times a quadruple, which is times 16. So the rate would actually go up by 16 times. And we can get that and call it the overall reaction order. If we add those up, 1, 2, 3, 4, so now we have 4 to the x equals, I don't think I said that right, it's fourth order, so if we take the concentration, uh, let's just say that, and if we double everything, it would go up by 16. That's a pretty terrible way of saying that, but on the fly here. All right, let's go to one more problem. And I got kind of one more, just doing this one to show you one, one quick thing. So we've got this, this crazy thing called S208 and then iodine. I want to find the order. I want to quickly find K and then the units for K and all that good stuff in this problem. All right. So looking real quickly at my data, I see a problem. S208 is never constant. That, that's going to make it very difficult for me to find my iodide because I, I can never hold this one constant. So what I'm going to have to do is find the S208 first. The I dot is held constant from trial 2 to 1. So let's take a quick ratio of trial 2 to 1 to find S208. All right. I'm just writing that down to help, help me remember what I'm finding here. Sometimes it's easy to forget. 0 0.027 over 0 0.018 to the M power. And if iodide is constant, the rate changes 3.9, 10 to the minus 6 over 2.6.
Times 10 to the minus 6. All right, let's get the calculator out if you need it. I mean, you may not need it. 0.018. All right, so that's 1.5 to the m power. So you may be sweating it now. 3.9 divided by 2.6. And also equals 1.5. Okay, well, crazy numbers, but at the end of the day, m still equals 1. So we're first order with respect to the S208 negative 2. All right, so let's carry on. Now we have to find iodide. And again, I can't, there's no good trial to pick. Um, I can't pick one and two. That's my only, that's my only limitation because iodide is constant there. So just for fun, let's pick three and two. And why not? And so let's just do a three over two. 0 0.054 over 0 0.036. Let's take that to the end power. Now, I almost messed up. Now, since S208 is not constant, I can't ignore it. So this is a multiplication. Since I almost made, messed up there. Multiplication sign. So I can't ignore my S208. I actually have to include its changes in trial 3 to 2. So 0 0.036 over 0 0.027. And we already know its order, its first order. Now I can do the equal sign and get my trials. <clears throat> Sorry, my rate. <clears throat> I'm trying to do math in my head. Can't think straight. All right, let's see what happens here. So 0 0.054 divided by 0 0.036 another 1.5 all right 0 0.036 we just did that a while ago I can't believe I'm using the calculator or maybe we didn't let me do that again just real quick 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 7. yeah 1.33 and then over here 7.8 that about 3.9 should be 2 all right we got some wild and wacky things going on here so let's divide both sides by 1.33. And that'll give me 1.5 to the n power equals 1.5. All right. So n equals 1. So all that work to figure out that both of my reactants are first order. So the rate law for this reaction is rate equals K S208 first order. You do not have to write the one. And then iodide, first order, you do not have to write the one. Now what I want to do with this problem before we leave is I want to find K, the right numbers and units. So overall this is second order. We'll come back to that in a sec. But to find K, we're going to pick a trial and sub in. So I always pick trial one. So I don't have it on the screen right now, but uh, if you have your data, well, I'll just slide down. All right, so I'm going to plug in 2.6 times 10 to the minus 6, and then these two concentrations, 18 and 36. So I'm going to plug all that in, 2.6, 10 to the minus 6, equals K times 0.018 to the first power and 0.036 to the first power. All right, so we want to get K here. So just solve it, very easy math, very easy algebra. Divide by 0.018, divide by 0.036. All right, 0 0.0040. So as far as the number goes, that's it. And you get the same K no matter which trials you pick. As long as your temperature is constant, this should always be a constant. Now the units, I told you a little bit earlier on an earlier piece of paper, that rate, not K, but the rate has a units of molarity per second, concentration over time. And so the overall order here is two. So we're gonna take molarity to the second order, simplify that. And so the units of this will be molarity minus one, S minus one, or 
some people prefer to write liters per mole second. But either way, AP doesn't care. All right, well, that's a differential rate law. It's not too bad. It's actually kind of fun in a perverse sort of a way. So I hope you understood that lesson. But if you have any questions, just let me know.